Grace and mercy be unto you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to Life in the Word. My name, name is Pastor Emmanuel Renee. I have to my left, Minister Renee Jr. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise like, the Lord. Subscribe to Life in the Word. We left at um, what verse? Verse 12. 12. Yeah. Okay, so he said, Behold, these are the ungodly who always prosper right, and are at ease in the world. They have increased in wealth. I mean, if we look at it, we find that the people without God prosper. People without, well, a form of prosperity. They have, it's not true prosperity. True prosperity is when God blesses you. But they learn how to walk in life. They learn how to have things. They're making $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year. They have all the houses, the cars, the lands, the city. But I remember one particular scripture, right, in the Bible, talking about the prosperity of the wicked. When this man... He said, oh, self, look at me. You know, he said, look at me. Look what I have. He said, this night, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to stretch my bonds. And I'm going to um, um, make it bigger to put some more stuff in it. And Jesus said, thou fool, mm -hmm. thy soul is cried this day. So this is what happening at the end in the prosperity of the wicked. You understand that? Somebody else going to have what you got. Right. That's what the Bible mm -hmm. said, the wealth of the wicked is. Is little for me, so let them have it, so I can have it. Oh yeah. Um, let them have all the money accumulated for me. Oh yeah. Amen. Amen. It's laid up for the laid just. For the Praise God. Now look what he says. Surely, so now, the psalmist begins to talk about, you know, certain things. It's hard. Now he said, um, surely, verse thirteen, and then in vain I have cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence. He said, man, I'm out here doing my best. I'm not here living for God. And the more I clean my heart, I'm here living holy. I give up drinking. I give up smoking. I give up woman. I give everything for you, God, and I'm still broke. <laughs> I'm still going to hell. So he said, in vain, I cleanse my heart, man. Right. Nothing changing my I, I'm here tithing every day. I'm giving money. The more I tithe, the more it seems like I have a problem with money. Yeah. So you can get very a certain way and begin to say, hey, man, in vain, I cleanse my heart. What's the purpose of me living holy if I don't get what I want? You see, that's the problem. That's the problem if you think that living holy is for you to get something. Because I heard that in church, you know. Right? I heard that in church. People say, you know what, let me fast so I can get this job. Let me let me stop sleeping. And no, sleep around. Go ahead, do what you want. Because that's what, no, really. Because then what you're trying to do is bargain with God. Right. And you don't bargain with God. Bargain. You don't do those things because you love Him. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You, you, you know you don't fornicate because you love Him, and, and, and you don't commit adultery because you love Him. You know what? As Christians and believers, some of us commit those things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you don't love God. Right. But guess what? The biggest problem is the enemy trying to keep you in doing it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. let me let me talk to some people. Just yeah. because you did it and you're a Christian. And God knows you love him. Come on. Because people yes. say, oh, you don't love him. Yeah, you did it and you love God. Shut yeah. your fool mouth. Don't, don't try to knock people down. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is this, right? You did it. Sometimes if you don't have the right people talking to you, you'd be like, well, I did it. I might as well continue. I might as well take the train down to downtown Brooklyn. <laughs> you, know <what> <laughs> you understand? But the key point is this, right? That I don't care if you did it. The point is of the devil is not that you did it. You know that, right? right? The point of the devil, he wants you to continue in it. Continue. He wants you to live yes. in it. He wants you to uh, uh, um, uh, abide in it. Yes. You understand yes. that? Yes. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, they did it. That's it. You disqualified. Then all of us disqualified. Every we did one. every single thing. Oh, yeah. Shut your mouth and sit here and we just <laughs> be in silent. Nobody can do nothing. Right. But the key point is you did it, but because now you do it, you repent and you come back to God. Don't allow the enemy to tell you because I did it, I'm no good, I'm this. Because the true battle of the enemy is to keep you living in that sin, living in the way that you're living. But if you do mess up, you ask God for forgiveness. And, and guess what? Start over again and, and start living holy for God. Um, many times in life, you're going to go to many things to do, um, um, you know, where you're going to be tested. Let me tell you something. Um, what I learned, and God is this. The places you fail, you're going to keep getting tested. God have time. God have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. 
And he going to make sure you're going to pass this test. Yes. You're going to pass it either at 20, 25, 30, 40, 80. No T. It gets, <laughs> it gets easier when you get older because the flesh starts to die. Right. Have you ever seen the older people in church living holy now? Because they've done all the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nah. oh, I'm holy. <laughs> you got no more strength. No more strength to do <laughs> So now you go, oh. But I would rather be holy at an earlier age than a later age. Mm -hmm. Because then that means that I have sacrificed some things to the Lord. Yeah. And I have um, come to a point of making them first and foremost. But don't allow people to tell you because you fail. Um, you, you disqualify. Sometimes you may fail many times. Oh, yeah. But the key point that I always tell, you know, sometimes you can't say nothing. I don't want people to fail all the time. You know, be like, oh, you know, pastor said you're going to fall 50 times and seven times. I may get up. <laughs> you know, so I don't want you to fall seven times, but the, this is a scripture. That said, a righteous man fell seven times and he gets up. But we don't want you to fall seven times. It's just maybe one time and then you get up and learn. But most of us are hard-headed. We're going to probably fall 70 times. But the key point is this, right? It's getting up. It's not staying in that state and that life. And you, you repent to God and you tell God, I'm sorry, please forgive me. That may means you may start in the back again. Amen. 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 Nobody hear me? Yes. Amen. You ain't going to start at number one. Because you, you, you're down there now. You're going to have to work your way up again. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to come up, you know, get your confidence. You know what I've noticed, right? A lot of people, right, um, a lot of times, you know, we're trying to get that feeling of deliverance or feeling of forgiveness. It's not about a feeling. Right. It's knowing. It's a knowing. Mm -hmm. It's knowing. I mean, thank you, forgive me. And, and I think what people have to mm -hmm. deal with is the guilt the after effect of what they done. Right. But God forgives you right away. He don't forgive you 20 days later. Come on. Hmm? He's a forgiver. He's to forgive you. Yes. Because when he forgives you of your sin, he said, okay, come back on January 7th, 2023. No, he's, he forgives you. He saved you right away. So the same way he forgives you right away. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that one of the things that keep people in the church from really getting on fire for God again, because we make them think that one... It was it one one thing you out one shot and you out? Yeah. It's yeah. not true. No. It's many shots sometimes you out. Right. Come on. See, I, I I speak and the things of the truth because a lot of times, man, especially how hard our head is, you know, that it makes take up. And sometimes it, it may not be your your head is hard, but it, it gets a little time to get in there to understand what God is trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. You understand that? So. The reason I'm saying that a lot of people feel, well, I fell, I might as well keep going. No, stop. Ask God for forgiveness. You may have to start in the back again, but work your way back um, to the top. You know, work your way back to where God wants you to be. Because God forgives you, but you don't have to deal with your guilt. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with your mind. Right. God is good. God forgave you, but you won't have to forgive yourself you do. and get back to that place. Amen. Uh, I don't know what this was, but maybe you need to hear it. But, but look at this. He says, surely in vain I, I've cleansed my heart and washed my hand in innocence. It's, it's never in vain to live holy for God. And he said, for all the day long have I been stricken and punished every morning. If I had said I would say this and express my feelings, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I consider how to understand this, it was too great of an effort for me and too painful for me. So now, um, to all his things he'd been through, He's starting to get back to himself. Um, you know, that backsliding spirit trying to fall off him. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, it's too painful now when I remember what, you know, I, I believe when you go into sin, you're crazy. Yeah, I think you lost your darn mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, really, don't, don't you ever wake up one day when he yeah. brings you out, you're like, oh. Yes, indeed. What, what, what am I? Right. What am I doing here? Who I, oh, you are. You like, you lost your mind. Yes. And you come into a place of really understanding where you've been. So Asaph came to a place. He said, man, I was tripping. Mm. Why was I tripping the way I'm tripping? And then when you come to the realization, what you've done is too painful to recognize. How can I hurt somebody that, that loves me so much? Mm. Mm. Everybody. Yeah. How could I be tripping on him like that? Mm. How can I act the way I've been acting? What, what, what happened to me? What's going on with me? What, what's, you know what I'm saying? Yes. 
Because people think that, you know, if you were aware what you, sometimes, that's what deception is. Deception is a form of blindness. That you can't really see yourself and what you're doing and the pain you're causing and how far you've gotten. Sometimes, you know, you know when you go in deep and leave, when they come and do a vigil, a missionary trip to your house and try to find you back, and they try to tell you, girl, you need to come back to church. Nah, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. I'm trying to be. Come on, girl. You, you need to come back. You know you can't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that means you lost. And they're trying to, and God sending people to find you. Right. Right. And sometimes you're not even aware. That's why it's important to have intercessory prayer. People that walked away and people that left. Because you have to pray that God break the deception yeah. and break things of their mind, stronghold yeah. of their mind, because or because that thing can hold them, yes. they can't break free. And one day when they break free, they say, oh man, this is too much for me. How, how could I have done this to God? Mm -hmm. How could, sometimes you feel like it was somebody else who did it, not you. And you're like, man, how could I, oh, I know God, oh man, how could I, oh, I messed up, I was tripping. And that's what Asaph trying to tell us, you, you out here tripping. You out here tripping big time. He, so so he said, I'm here jealous of people I should never be jealous of. I'm here wanting things of people that they that those things they have have no value. So let me tell you something. It's important. I tell church people it's important not to only be in the house. Yeah, I, I pray at home. I worship at home. But let me tell you something. It's a difference when I come here. It's a difference when I'm around people that do the same thing that love the same God that I love. So Asaph said, until I came into the sanctuary of God, until I came to church, yes. there I understood, for I considered that end. So Asaph said, something happened to me. When I came to church, I found out they should be jealous of me. I had nothing to be jealous of them. Then I considered their end. I considered where they're heading, and they don't even know where they're heading. The Bible said that the narrow way is the path. The broad way, they're in the broad way. Broad. Everybody is in that road, that broad road, that road, everybody taking. But the narrow way is like a cliff. I don't know if you know this cliff that you have to press your back against the wall and go tiptoe to go. Like a ledge. Like a ledge. Right. You have to, that's, that's the way to God. It is tight. It is it is a tight road. And it's a road you gotta take by yourself because if to because 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 you know not everybody said people can get in the way. So I have to be in the road by myself and tiptoe my way into eternal life. Squeeze my way in there because it's tight, because not everybody wanna take the, the tight places, they wanna take the high road. I'm gonna stop with this, right? They, there in Israel, they had the, a place called the Eye of the Camel, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the needle. Mm -hmm. It's like a needle place. And I think this is why Asaph said, then I went to the house of God. I considered the way, that's why I don't look at the world and what they're doing. My eyes gotta be on Jesus. So they said that the place that's called the Eye of the Needle, the camel used to have all those things. And it's back. And you can't go there. You can't go there you can't make it to heaven with all those things in your back. You can't make it in heaven with all your sins in your back. Mm -hmm. With all the things that you got in your back. So what they did is they put everything down on that side. And they, and they walked the camel in. And then one by one, they used to bring back the merchandise, everything else. But we don't want to bring the merchandise. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying to you, to make it in God. Right, you have to drop all those things on this side and go on the other side empty. Right. It is the rich, and the prosperous in the world want to take that that baggage with them, mm -hmm. but in God you have to drop everything on that side and 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 walk of course there with nothing on. Right. You understand that? That is what called the eye of the needle. The most important thing to you has to be God. Not what you possess. Because you ain't going to take I have never seen nobody take that their house to heaven. Because God will, will already have one for you. Hallelujah. You know something? You ain't going to take this body with you. 
Because the Bible said he got one for you there too. Hallelujah. He got mentions. He got stuff. Come on now. He even, he, you know, you're, you're not even going to take this earth. He said, I got rivers. I got mountains. I got all things. Let me tell you something. Naked I come into the world. Naked I go back to where I come from. Hallelujah. So why is it that you dying over things like we're trying to say that's temporary? It's only temporary. It's only something that you possess here. God give you to enjoy. Are you willing to lose your life for something that's temporary? So ASAP said, I almost tripped. He said, I got my perception when I went to the house of God and God gave me a revelation and God showed me that and I'd rather live the life I'm living than to be envious of a life that they have in because at the, at the end, I'm going to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. But for them, this is going to be the only life they have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Renab. To my left, Minister Renee Jr. We have one thing to say to you. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. God bless you.